Okay, I'm going to continue going over the uh, review questions that I have posted on my updated syllabus as a way to allow you to assess how much you remember of what we did in computer networks in the first half of the spring semester before we went on our COVID virus break. Now, with this, what I want to do is to look at the second review question, which is a question on Hamming codes. Now, uh, so let me, let me go to this here. Uh, here is my updated syllabus, uh, and this is posted on uh, the Moodle for the course. And right up early on in the beginning of the updated syllabus, I've uh, put some review questions here. I've already generated the video for the first review question, which is computing the expected number of retransmissions in order to get a data packet uh, through the network uh, error-free. And I'm going to the second question now, which is about Hamming error correcting codes. And this is, uh, this is one of the really clever ideas that I've come across in, in my life. You know, every once in a while you come across this idea that is so simple and so clever. And you think, boy, why didn't I think of that? And at the same time, the idea has a profound impact on, on the progress of science or technology or wherever the idea uh, happens to reside in what area of uh, knowledge. The Hamming codes are like that. It's a, like the special theory of relativity. Uh, simple, uh, but profound. Okay, let's look at this question. 16-bit messages right here. 16-bit messages uh, are transmitted using a Hamming code. How many check bits are needed to ensure that the receiver can detect and correct single-bit errors? Show the bit pattern transmitted for the message. And here's the message right up here in red right here. Assume that even parity is used in the Hamming code. You can use either even parity or odd parity. Recall the Acrobat sheet or the Excel sheet posted on the Moodle about Hamming codes. And this is something I posted way back months ago. Okay, so here's our, our data packet right here in, in red. Uh, 110100, etc. And uh, so that is the uncoded data. Now what I want to do is I want to add these Hamming parity bits on there to allow us to both detect if there's an error in the bit sequence, the received bit sequence, and at the same time, if there's a single error, then we can determine what that error is and correct it. Uh, now, I'm just going to go through this, this example on generating the Hamming code. I'm not going to be going into a lot of explanation as to why things are done in a particular way here. That, um, uh, that can be done by reading some of the documents that I have posted on the Moodle. And uh, in theory, anyway, you've already looked at that. So let's look at how we generate the Hamming code for this uh, data packet. Okay, now the Hamming code is going to look like this right in here. Okay, so right in here, this. So we have in red, we have our original data uh, in ones and zeros. And then you notice that we've added A, B, C, D, and E right here in this. This will be our transmitted a code word. And A, B, C, D, and E are additional bits. They're the Hamming uh, parity bits. And what I want to do is show you how we compute whether A, B, C, D, and E are each either 0 or 1. Okay, so how are we going to do this? And uh, to uh, explain that, I want to pull up 
the Excel spreadsheet that I generated and also posted on the Moodle because that Excel sheet hopefully uh, makes it clear how we do this. So here, let me pull up this Excel sheet right in here. Okay, here we go. Hammy error correcting codes Excel sheet. Now, um, right up here in, at the top, right in here, I have a chart which shows how we generate the parity bits for the Hamming code. Now, the first part of the question is how many parity bits do we need? And um, so that should actually uh, that should actually fall right out here as we as we look at this. Okay, so right in here I have identified the what I'll call is the okay. This is the uh, the Hamming coded word that's transmitted. And each bit in that coded word, there's a, the bit that's transmitted in position one, in bit in position two, position three, and so on. And uh, the bits are either going to be parity bits or data bits. Now the parity bits are identified as P1, P2, P3, and so on as you go across there. The, uh, the data bits are identified as D1, D2, and D3. Okay, so what we have to do is calculate the values of the P's using the values of the D's, the data bits in the, uh, in the packet. Now, to calculate the value for uh, packet here, P, uh, parity bit P1, we look at these alternate bits in the, in the code word. So we're looking at, we're computing P1. We look at data bit D1, D2, D3, uh, D5, D7, and so on. Now notice too, by the way here, that where we put the parity bits, if you look at this, it doesn't seem to have any particular pattern to it. We put a parity bit in position one, we put a parity bit in position two, we put a parity bit not in three, but in four, then we put another parity bit up in eight, and so on. So the position of the parity bits seems a bit strange. And at the same time, uh, it turns out to be what's part of what's really clever about the Hamming code. So let's, uh, let's examine this. Now, parity bit P1 here, which is associated with uh, these data bits here. Let me, let me just write that out again here. Okay, this data bit, this data bit, and so on. Those, that group of data bits Parity bit P1 is the only parity bit associated with that group of data bits. Okay, so how do we compute whether P1 is a 0 or P1 is a 1? Okay, so what I want to do is go back, look at the original message, and, uh, and do this computation. Okay, so I've actually written that out right here. Here we go. So I've taken the original... Um, data sequence here, right up here on top, which is going to be marked as uh, zeros and ones. That's the original data sequence. And the parity bits are marked with letters, A, B, C, D, and so on. Uh, now, so I, I pointed out from the Excel sheet, in order to compute the value for parity bit A, I look at these values, alternate values, as I go along here in the sequence, just like this. Okay, so to compute A, what I do is take the values that I've under, underlined here, and uh, I compute, are they going to, uh, and I just, I compute, I add them up. Okay, so I have one 
plus one plus one. Okay, now I have zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 one. So I have one, 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 one. Let's see, now I, I uh, add these up. Uh, binary addition. One plus one is zero. Plus one is one. Plus zero is one. Plus one is zero. Plus zero is zero. Plus one is one. Plus one is zero. Plus one is one. Plus one is zero. So the binary addition of these is zero. This binary addition tells me the value of A. So A is going to be zero here. So A, when I put it right in here, is going to be, uh, oh, I said, why did I write one? Is zero. Okay, there. So that's A. Now, that was pretty straightforward. We just look at alternate values in the sequence, do the binary addition, and compute the value of A. Now, how do we compute the value of B right here? Okay, well, we look at a different set of, of data bits here. Let's see, look at the Excel sheet. And here, to compute the value of B, which is parity bit 2, right here. Okay, so to look at the value of B, I look at uh, the values in position 2 here. Here, position 2, position 2, position 3. Okay, then position 6, position 7, then position 10, and position 11, and so on down the, uh, the sequence. So notice, whereas to compute P1, I looked at every other bit in the sequence, and to compute P2, I'm grouping the, the data sequences the, in, in, in groups of two. So I take two, skip two, take two, skip two, and so on, all the way down here. So let me take our data sequence and then write out those values right here. So let me just pull that off here, right there. Okay, now, so I come back here and look at this. Okay, so here's my computation for B right here. Okay, so I take these two values. B is the first one, which is not, in, in, in not, in, not included when I add them up. So I have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So I have 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, now I, I do that binary addition. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 1 is 0, plus 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, plus 0 is 1, plus 1 is 0, 0, 1. So I add these up, and I get a 1, a binary addition. So the value of B is 1. Okay, so I put a 1 here. There's that. Now, how do I compute the next uh, parity bit. I come back here, look at my data, notice that for parity bit here, which I'm calling P4, this parity bit right here, I look at these values in the sequence. So I look at a group of four. So I uh, look at a group of four beginning with position four, four, five, six, seven. Then I skip four positions. Then I look at the next group of four, skip four positions, look at the next group of four, and so on. So that's how I do that one. Okay, so let's look and see how this works right here. Okay, so we're computing the value for parity bit C right here. This value right here. So the first four positions, but we don't count C as, uh, as part of that when we're adding them up. So we have C, but then we have 101 right here. 101, okay, 101. So 101, 101. We skip four. Look at the next four here, 1001. 
that's right here, skip four, and then we look at the next four, but there aren't four, there are only two, so we take those two right here. Now we do the binary addition. One plus zero is one, plus one is zero, plus one is one, plus zero is one, plus zero is one, plus one is zero, plus zero is zero, plus one is one, one. So we compute the value of C as 1. Okay, so the value of C is 1. So that would go right here. The value of C is in that position. Okay, now we do similarly. We do for D and E. And I'll let you figure that out right there. But let me go back here and just point this out. That, okay, to do the next parity bit, which is, uh, let's say, right here. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, to do the next parity bit, we do... Um, It, um, we can't really see it here. Here we go. Okay, so this is where on parity bit 8 right here. P8. So I go uh, skip all the way up here to position 8. So I don't use any of the previous data bits. I start at position 8. So I have 8, 9, 10, all the way on up here, up to 15. So 8 to 15. And notice that the position 8 is parity bit 8. Now that is not included in our addition. Okay, so I do that calculation right here. And so... And these are the values that go in that calculation where we don't actually add the bit D in as we're doing the, the addition. I do the addition. I come up with D equals 1. Then I look at the, the next parity bit, which is E. And, and at, at this point now, we don't need any more parity bits. And, uh, but we do E is is now parity bit 16 right here, as I'm calling it right here, parity bit 16. And we go all the way up here. And these are all the bits that come into that. And um, then we do parity, the next parity bit, which has, see, 16 right here is right down here, these parity bits down here, these parity bits at the bottom. So they go from uh, 16 up to 21, actually. I don't have 21 there. Okay, so this is how we generate the values for the parity bits in the Hamming code. Now, I'm going through this, showing you how to generate the Hamming code. And um, so, which is what the question is, how do you produce the Hamming code? Uh, so in order to produce this Hamming code, you need to go and you need to look at the uh, PDF file and this Excel spreadsheet that I have posted on a Moodle uh, for that you presumably you've already looked at, which is why I'm not going through in great detail uh, to explain all the nuances here. Okay, so with that, I hope this gives you some idea. Look at the explanation and look at the Excel sheet and see if you cannot figure out uh, how these parity bits are generated. That's it. See you next time.